we wanted to talk about multiculturalism, we can in fact take Safu as a microcosm of Moroccan society. For some reason, Safro came to be one of the most important anthropological sites, not in only in Morocco, but over, uh, all over the MENA uh, region. One of the prominent anthropological researchers in the world, Clifford Geertz, came to Safro with his wife, and he was joined with uh, a whole team of anthropological researchers, including uh, Paul Rabinow, Rosen, and, uh, and others. Why Safru? The short answer, which is, I think, very convenient to our discussion right now, is that Safru hosts a representative number of the population of Morocco. Ethnographically, Safru is not so big. Clifford Geertz said it hosted 500 Jews, and uh, so he came in the late 60s. Um, 500 Jews, or 500 Jewish families, I wasn't sure. And uh, also Amazigh people from rural areas, but Amazigh, urban Amazigh people, but also uh, townspeople and people from the mountains. So this is, in fact, a very important because it's much more interested in signifying practices or symbolic values of relations between people. Uh, so the choice of Safru and uh, for uh, anthropologists like Rabino, the choice of Sidi Lahsen Yusi, which is a tiny village about 20 kilometers from, from Safru, the choice of these tiny places is so important because the, the anthropologists are more concerned with tiny places where we have a, break, a big number of representative cultures. Uh, and so Sidi Lahsin Yusi, for example, where uh, Paul Rabino went in the late 1960s, is very important because it's a, a kind of ethnic laboratory, microcosmic Moroccan society that was representative of this rich multiculturalism in, in Morocco. One of the main things about, uh, about the, the work of uh, people like Rabino Geertz, uh, Hildur Geertz, uh, Clifford Geertz, uh, Kevin Dwyer, Dalek Lehman in uh, Bujad, for example, also Vincent Cropanzano in Meknes, is very important because it's a breakthrough. These anthropologists started to be more interested in this interactive contact approach to culture, to, understand, to the understanding of local cultures, not from this uh, colonial relation with the natives, but with this interactive contact understanding. Some of the most important anthropological theories were coined here in Safro, especially participant observation. And the anthropologized is a relation of partners rather than one of colonialism. And this, this interactive, immediate relationship with the, the natives helped the anthropologists invest the multicultural dimension of these, uh, of these societies. And so, for example, Clifford Geertz, who had a strong economic training, was concerned with the souk in Safru. Uh, the souk as a cultural text in which you see the coming together of a variety of ethnicities and cultures and how they deal with each other, the hierarchical relations between them, the hierarchical relation between the townsmen and the, uh, the rural people, between the, the Jews and the, the Muslims, and also the, the kind of values that circulated within the souk is completely different from anything we know, for example, in, in America or in, in, in Europe or in the West. The other thing that is also, I think, important about uh, this participant observation is that the anthropologist is not just an observer. He is part and partial. He is participant. Rabino, for example, tells us about how he is invited to the wedding in Sidi Lhassan Lucy, And through this wedding, 
He tells us about the signifying practices of Moroccan culture and the, the major differences between the Americans and the Moroccans in their uh, daily relations because uh, the anthropologists are really concerned with the details, the delay, uh, daily details that we can more particularly invest in uh, weddings. He talks minutely about the symbolic and the semiotic interpretation of the wedding and he lets us, he lets the reader understand how cultures think and also how multiculturalism can be seen not only theoretically but in practice. He came to Morocco when we still have the remnants of a dying colonialism. So he came to the Olevry Hotel uh, that was uh, run and owned by the remnants of the French colonizers. And in, uh, he tells us about this, the, the, this presence of French culture, but at its last days and last decade. So one of the things uh, Rabino tries to draw in, uh, in, in about Sifru is how Sifru is not only as is usually uh, the reductive image we have from the West is an Arab Muslim country. So what he tells us also is that Moroccan culture is also French culture. So uh, the post-colonial condition is still a continuity of the French cultural presence in Morocco and we see it in the bar, we see it in the, also in the, 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 the shops, in the shops where we can have this combination of Moroccan items, French items, but also the beginnings of the American influence, uh, not at a global scale, but the beginnings of the, the influence of, uh, of American culture, especially through the, the uh, when uh, Americans started uh, flocking into Safru. And, and another thing that is important about this is the way, for example, French people understood North African or Moroccan culture is different from the American understanding of Moroccan culture. Because for the Americans, the French are part of the native local culture, which adds up to this multicultural dimension of the, 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 the Moroccan culture. One of the things that uh, these anthropologists started looking at is, for example, when they started coming back after they did field work in Safru, when some of the anthropologists came back, sometimes Safru becomes unknown to them. Unknown to them because of the changes, especially in the Medina, we have more uh, signs of global culture with the cyber cafes and, uh, and the internet or in the Medina. But also the Jews started leaving, abandoning the Mallah because of course of the miserable conditions of the Mallah. Uh, when they started leaving either to go to the new, uh, to Fez or to the Ville Nouvelle or to uh, different parts of the world, including France, Canada, but also uh, Israel or Palestine, the Mallah started to be reoccupied by prostitutes. The prostitutes who were coming, these uh, poor women, these poor girls who came from usually from rural areas. This is so important to, to understand the changes that happened over the 80s and the 90s and also right now. Changes that are very important to understanding the society of Safru, which can stand for not only for Sfru, but for the whole, uh, for the whole Moroccan uh, society. Sfru, like everywhere else in, in Morocco, is going global.